Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using flexibility matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, there are two columns, column AB and column CD. Also, there is a beam BC. In the columns, there are no loads. In the beam BC, there is uniformly distributed load 9 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. The height of the columns is 4 meter. Length of the beam is also 4 meter. This frame is a non sway type frame because we have symmetrical loading and symmetrical dimensions. Since this frame is having symmetrical loading and symmetrical dimensions, we can easily find the vertical reactions VA and VD. To find VA and VD, we have to multiply the UDL 9 with the distance 4 and then divide that by 2. When we do that, we are getting VA and VD, which is equal to 18 kN. Now, let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this frame, the number of unknown reactions and movements are 4. They are the horizontal reactions HA, HD and the movements MA and MD. The available equilibrium equations are two. They are sigma m is equal to zero and sigma h is equal to zero. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to four minus two. We will get two. From the point D, let us remove HD and MD. You can see that from the point D, I have removed MD and HD. Now in the point D, we have only the vertical reaction VD. This structure is called the released structure. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. Let us keep the horizontal reaction HD as the first coordinate. The moment MD as the second coordinate. We are keeping them as the coordinates because we have removed them. Let us assume that the horizontal reaction HD is acting towards the right side and the moment MD is acting in the clockwise direction. Finally, if we get any one of the value as negative, our assumption is incorrect then we can change the directions. Let us see the formula to find HD and MD. P matrix is equal to delta matrix inverse into delta matrix minus delta L matrix. Inside the P matrix, we will have HD and MD. In the given frame, in the point D, there is no displacement. So, inside the delta matrix, the values of delta 1 and delta 2 will be 0. The size of the delta matrix will be 2 cross 2 because in this analysis, we have two coordinates. In this formula, now we are going to find delta L matrix and delta matrix. For that, we are going to use unit load method. In the unit load method, first we have to find the moment M using the loads given in the frame. Then we have to remove all of the loads and apply unit load in the first coordinate and find the moment M1. Then we have to apply unit moment in the second coordinate and find the moment M2. Now let us find the moment M. For that we have to make sections in the frame. 
in this frame there are three different parts dc cb and ba so we have to make three sections you can see that i have made three sections the first section in dc the second section in cb and the third section in ba we know that it is a symmetrical non sway frame the moments we calculate from the first section and the third section will be same so we can take any one of the section and multiply the integrations with two here i am going to consider the first section and multiply the integrations with two in this case we can eliminate the third section so we can solve the problem very faster and very easily before finding the moments let us make the free body diagram for that i am going to split the frame from the point c so that we will get two different parts you can see that i have split the frame from the point c because of this 18 kN a reaction is developed in the point c since in the point d it is acting upwards here it should be acting downwards and here it should be acting upwards for dc i have made the section at a distance of x from the point d so the origin is d and the limit is 0 to 4 for cb i have made the section at a distance of x from the point c so the origin is c and the limit is 0 to 4 we are going to find the moments in the left hand side clockwise will be negative and anti clockwise will be positive let us find the moment for dc for this load there is no perpendicular distance so the moment is zero for dc now let us find the moment for cb this 18 kN is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is x 18 into x we will get 18x the udl is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be negative for the udl we have to multiply with the distance and a distance by 2 here the distance is x so x into x by 2 9 upon 2 we will get 4.5 let us apply this here now let us apply unit load in the first coordinate and find the moment m1 we have applied unit load towards the right side so a reaction is developed in the point c towards the left side and here it should be acting towards the right side let us find the moment in the point c the unit load is acting in the anti clockwise direction and the distance is 4 1 into 4 we will get 4 since the unit load is acting in the anti clockwise direction the developed moment should be acting in the clockwise direction and here it should be acting in the anti clockwise direction let us find the moment m1 in dc the unit load is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is x 1 into x we will get x let us find m1 in cb this moment is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it will be positive now let us apply unit moment in the second coordinate and to find the moment m2 in the point d we have applied unit moment in the clockwise direction 
So in the point C, a unit movement is developed in the anti-clockwise direction and here it should be acting in the clockwise direction. Let us find M2 in DC. The unit movement is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be negative. Let us find M2 in CB. The unit movement is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be negative. Now we are going to make the delta L matrix. In the delta L matrix first let us find delta 1L. The formula is integration of M M1 upon EI dx. For DC and BA the value of M is 0. So no need to make the integration. Only make the integration for CB. For CB the limit is 0 to 4. Let us apply the values of M and M1. Now we can take a calculator and do this integration. If you do not know how to make integration in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the value of delta 1L. Now let us find delta 2L. The formula is integration of m m2 upon ei dx. In the formula, let us apply the values of m and m2. After integrating, we are getting delta 2L. In the delta L matrix, we have found both of the values. Let us apply them. 1 upon ei is constant. Let us keep it outside. Now let us make the delta matrix. In the delta matrix, first let us find delta 1 1. The formula is integration of m1 square upon ei dx. When we make integration for dc, we have to multiply the integration with 2. Because for dc and ba, we have made only one section. We know that these values are same for dc and ba. In the integrations, let us apply the values of M1. After the calculation, we are getting delta 1, 1. Now, let us find delta 1, 2 and delta 2, 1. Both of them having the same formula. Integration of M1, M2 upon EI dx. Let us apply the values of M1 and M2. After the calculation, we are getting delta 1, 2 and delta 2, 1. Now let us find delta 2, 2. The formula is integration of m2 square upon ea dx. Let us apply the values of m2. After the calculation, we are getting delta 2, 2. In the delta matrix, we have calculated all of the values. Let us apply them. 1 upon EA is constant. Let us keep it outside. In this formula, we have found everything. Let us apply them. 1 upon EA inverse is EA. We can add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this. We can eliminate EA. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse. If you do not know how to find inverse in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the inverse. Now we can multiply these two matrices. After multiplying, we are getting HD and MD. For HD and MD, we have got negative values. That means our assumptions are incorrect. We assumed that HD is acting towards the right side, but actually it is acting towards the left side. Also, we assumed that MD is acting in the clockwise direction, but actually it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. 
by applying the rule sigma h is equal to 0 we can find h a let us take movement about a and find out m a let us assume that m a is acting in the clockwise direction for m a we have got a positive value that means our assumption is correct it is acting in the clockwise direction now let us make the free body diagram so that we can easily draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams here you can see the shear force diagram we can draw the bending moment diagram using the superposition method now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video